why is the topic relevant or and interesting? Okay? Relevant is bakit makabuluhan yung paksa na yun na sinusulat mo? Okay? Para sa ating mga Filipino major. Bakit napaka-interesante uh, magsulat ng isang thesis on that particular topic? Okay? So, the example that we have here. Okay? Ayan. So, for example, yung topic niya is about social media. O naalala nyo kanina yung sample natin sa Pilipino, social media modality. So, why is it relevant? So, isusulat niya dyan in your introduction, in today's world of social media, the socialization of children must involve many different mediums and approaches. So, so the topic of social media was able to indicate why is social media relevant? Bakit makabuluhan yung pag-aaral ng social media or bakit napaka-interesante na gumawa tayo ng isang thesis tungkol sa social media. Okay? Okay, so we now proceed with our move number 2. If you try to recall, uh, ma'am and sir, that uh, our move number 1 is basically define what is the topic of your research and tell us what makes it relevant and interesting, okay? With regard to move number 2, okay, this is the time that you are going to provide us with the review of previous research, okay? Ito na sinasabi ko na sa introduction pa lang, meron nun tayong RRL at RRS. So, refer to previous research about your topic. For example, the topic that you have is about something about uh, constructivism, no? something about uh, experiential learning. Okay? Yun ang ginamit mong topic mo sa inyong study, sa inyong thesis. Experiential learning. Okay? Which is under the, the theory of constructivism. So, hindi natin maiiwasan, syempre, that in our move number 2, we try to mention the contribution of John Dewey. Because our topic is some, has something to do about hands-on approach to education. Or your topic, your thesis is about experiential learning. And kung sino-sino pang nag-contribute or kung sino-sino pang study and uh, uh, explanation or definition uh, provided okay, by different experts with regard to the topic that you have. So move number two actually is like your mini review of related literature and studies. Mini review. Okay? Pero siya yung actually pinakamahabang part ng yung introduction. Okay? Alright. So, when you're done already with your move number one, okay, medyo pa ulit-ulit lang po ako ang ating move number one, you state your topic, define what makes it relevant and what makes it interesting. Ang move number two natin ay uh, we are providing a review of related literature and studies okay, to support our topic. Sino yung mga earlier researches and mga earlier explanations provided okay, sa ating move number two. Our move number three, actually, we have three claims. No? Pipili lang kayo. So, for move number three, you are going to define your niche. The first claim, yung tinatawag natin, you make a counter claim. Okay? A counter claim is actually you try to oppose, no? Kinokontra mo na. If you remember your move number two, no? May mga nauna nang gumawa. May mga naunang nagsulat na about that particular topic. And then, for your move number three, you can claim na, ah, oh, okay na. Hindi na ako naniniwala sa ganun. Iba na yung, iba na yung mga bagong kaalaman ngayon. Like, for example, technology. Okay? O, oh, if the study has been written 10 years ago, so basically, technology nowadays is different already. So you can make a counterclaim. Or for example, with people, sa mga tao. Okay? Um, if you're talking about the, the characteristics of teenagers uh, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, or 10 years ago, and nowadays, we have a different uh, set of, of characteristics already or behavior with regard to our teenagers, millennial na tawag sa kanila, so, we can claim na, ah, okay, gusto ko nang kontrahin yan. Hindi na ako, I don't agree anymore with the, with the literatures, with the researches written in your move number two. So, pwede mo siyang i-counterclaim. That is the first uh, claim, okay, 
that is the first move number three that you can have in your research introduction. For example, ito po. Okay? So, however, recent experiments in our laboratory shows that from the word however, it means that you are contradicting already what is being indicated in your move number two. Another is, however, these experiments have failed to recognize that. Okay? So, you can see from the transitional device na kinokontra mo na kung ano yung mga ginawa ng mga earlier researches or earlier explanations okay, in your mini RRL, RRS, in your move number 2. Okay? Because you point out the flaws, no? May mga kakulangan na or hindi ka na, ano, hindi ka na naniniwala na yun ay totoo pa on this particular uh, time frame, no? Dahil luma na sila or iba na yung characteristics, okay? Another, for your move number three, eto, very common with regard to uh, researches, yung sinasabi natin, you try to identify the research gap, no? From your many researches, many studies in your move number two, okay, you try to tell what are what is lacking, ano yung mga hindi nila nagawa, what is deficient in their study. And then, what is deficient in their study, okay, you try to fill that one, ikaw yung magpupuno nun, basically, through your research, okay? So, a research gap is yung kakulangan, okay? Ano yung mga kakulangan? na mga nauna nang ginawang mga researches or studies with regard to that particular topic. Okay? And then, the third claim, eto, very common din ito, if you base that on your move number two, there are already earlier researches done, earlier explanations done. Move number, uh, claim number three actually is that you just continue, develop your own line of inquiry using the same topic, okay? May mga topics na kunwari na nauna, maganda, okay? Wala naman dapat i-contra doon. You cannot contradict them kasi maayos pa, maganda pa, relevant pa rin siya, okay? Wala namang kakulangan yung ginawa nila actually. Sobrang ganda. And what are you going to do is that you are just going to to replicate, the term there is uh, i-replicate mo lang, gagayahin mo lang yung kanilang ginawa. But this time, pwede ba yun? Actually, pwede. Okay? Because you are just continuing the tradition of that particular topic. Well, sabi nga natin, you are just going to provide additional uh, additional information, additional discoveries on that particular topic. For example, if this study is being done uh, abroad, in the US for example, so same topic, i-apply mo siya dito naman sa ating bansa or in our in the context of our own place, no? Like in Mekawayan, okay? There are many studies already done, cyberbullying, okay, abroad, okay, for example, but you can do the same topic here in our in our place, no? Cyberbullying using for example uh, uh, yung local yung lokal ng Mekawayan National High School, okay, and using the students that we have here. So, pwede yon. Tawag dyan is that you're just continuing the tradition of that research. Tinutuloy mo lang yung ginawang researches na ng ibang tao, the same topic, but you are going to apply that in our own local, using our uh, a different participant. Okay? Alright. So, we are now on move number Four. So, if we try to recall, galing tayo sa move number three, you have a choice of three claims no? for move number three. The first one is you try to counterclaim. Okay? Counterclaim is you are contradict contradicting already uh, uh, earlier studies, earlier literature, earlier researches. Kinokontra mo na because they are, you don't agree with them anymore or they are not relevant anymore nowadays. Yung number two claim natin is that there is a gap, okay, with researches made already, may mga kakulangan sa mga ginawa nila, kaya that's why yung kakulangan, yun ang ginagawa mo ngayon, to, com, to fill in the gap with their studies. No? And then, yung, the third claim that we have is that you are just continuing the same topic made by other researches, continuing the inquiry, continuing the tradition of that particular topic. So therefore now, we go now on move number four, which is we are occupying the niche, no? Ang niche kasi, 
niche nicho ubaga pag namatay ka di ba alam niyo yung nicho ang nicho actually is a place no is a vacant place particularly in a cemetery okay so in research we have to occupy a vacant niche no so once that we have established already the niche based on move number 1 2 and 3 that's the time that you are just going to outline the objectives of your study. So, what are the objectives of your study? Ito, madali na po ito. The objectives are actually in your statement of the purpose. You are going to introduce already your own research through your statement of the purpose. Okay, babanggitin mo ulit. Yung statement of the purpose mo. Okay, and your research questions in the form of objectives. And then, you are going to tell me what are the findings, possible findings, although hindi pa siya finding, kasi wala pa, wala pang findings. Ang tawag natin dyan, what are the possible implications of the study? So in move number four, you introduce already uh, what is your study all about? Tungkol sa ano ba yung thesis mo na yan? And basically, ano isusulat mo dyan? You are going to write again your SOP or the statement of the problem or the purpose, the research questions in the form of, huwag naman questions ang sulat, naka-sentence form na siya, objectives, and what are the possible findings or implications of your study. So that is move number four. Okay, let's try to have some samples. Okay, so for move number one, uh, tinan natin, ano yung pwede natin example dito, establishing the research Territory, that is move number one. So, ano nga uli ang move number one? Introduce what is your topic. Define why the topic is relevant or and interesting. So, this one. Move number one, as an example. The term writing apprehension, originally coined in 1975 by Daly and Miller, refers to a generalized tendency to experience some form of anxiety when faced with the task of encoding messages. So this is the topic, writing apprehension. It looks very technical. Actually, when you read very well a particular topic, kung talaga nagbabasa kayo ng maigi, there are many common, uh, common experiences in the classroom. Oh, na meron pala siyang research, may technical research term. Ang writing apprehension, kung titignan natin, very technical, very thesis-like siya. Pero, this is common because writing apprehension is, in the classroom, eto yung mga estudyante ay parang nag-atubiling magsulat. Ayaw magsulat. So, we call this, technically, in thesis writing or in research, according to Daly and Miller, as what? Writing apprehension pala. As a teacher in the elementary, for example, in grade 3, grade 4, oh, and you find your students that they are not writing, no? You have a writing activity, yet hindi sila nagsusulat, tapos nagagalit tayo, sasabihin natin, mahina ang ulo, o oh, no, yun pala, meron palang researchable na construct with regard to that particular research problem. And that particular construct in research as a problem is what we call writing apprehension according to Daly and Miller. So, if we are going to continue, according to this introduction, okay, the, the term writing apprehension, direct na, go hard. It has been defined by Daly and Miller. Ano pan dapat gawin natin for move number one? We have to explain why writing apprehension is interesting and relevant to be studied in as a thesis. So, pinaliwanag dito in this introduction, this area nowadays is becoming is becoming an interesting topic. Ah, may an dito, sorry. May edit lang natin. Nowadays, is becoming an interesting topic as it presents common concern yet unexplored domain on why students are hesitant to learn the writing process in the classroom. So, see? Bakit makabuluhan aralin to? Siyempre, ang daming estudyante ang hindi marunong magsulat nagagalit tayo, hindi nagsusulat. Yun pala, may dahilan kung bakit hindi sila nagsusulat sa mga writing activities. Okay? Very common concern, but if you note very well, a lot of researchers or a lot of teachers, they don't know that this is researchable. Okay? Because 
this is a researchable topic which is what they call writing apprehension. Yung pag-atubili, natatakot, or parang sabihin na natin nag-aalangan, hindi naman siguro tinatamad magsulat yung mga estudyante. So, this becomes the topic in this particular research as defined by Daly and Miller. Same topic, okay? We continue, move number two tayo. Sige po, ma'am and sir. So, for move number two, Okay, so expected in move number two, we do review of previous research. Okay, so this is our review of related literature in our introduction. So you could see that these are the experts. Okay, ito yung mga unang researches, uh, mga explanations with regard to what we call writing apprehension. So the contributions of the works of Daly and Miller. Meron tayo, uh, it has been explained also by Daly and Shamu, and then other authors. So, as we say, that move number two, simplistically, is your mini review of related literature and studies. Mini RRL, mini RRS mo siya in your research introduction. Ulitin ko yung ating intro pa lang, meron na tayong RRL, meron na tayong RRS. Okay? For move number three, we have three claims, okay? So, for this particular study, sa writing apprehension, uh, ang claim na pinili ng writer is that merong kakulangan. There is a gap in the study of writing apprehension, okay? So, take a look at move number three. Ano da yung kakulangan? To date, however, no substantive research has been done. Wala pa rin masyadong research ang ginagawa with regard to, the, to define the relationship between writing apprehension and the processes students employ as they compose. Okay? So, wala pang masyadong nag-aaral nito. And much more, wala pang masyadong nag-aaral kung paano yung mga estudyante magsulat. What are the processes students employ when they do the writing process? Nagagalit tayo, akala natin mahina lang. Yung pala, they, we, yung mga teachers, hindi rin pala nila tinuturuan what are the correct processes in writing, in composing? So this particular study would like to bridge the gap on what? On how writing apprehension or how teaching the students the writing process helps them in improving their writing apprehension. Na hindi na sila nag atubile at sila ay nagsusulat talaga ng kanilang writing activities. Okay? So may kakulangan pa raw. That's the claim indicated by this topic, by this author, on writing apprehension in his move number 3. Isa lang po pipiliin nyo on the claim. Okay? Either may kakulangan or gusto nyo kontrahin, counterclaiming, or gusto nyo na ituloy yung uh, topic na ginawa ng ibang researches. Okay? Okay? And then, for our last part of our research introduction, sample natin, o oh, very simple, introduce already your research. Introduce mo na what is your research all about? Ulitin ko, paano ginagawa to? i restate lang natin ulit yung ating SOP. Yung ating statement of the purpose and our research questions. Not in question form, but in sentence form na siya. And of course, what are the implications? So, if I may read, eto po. So, eto na po. SOP lang ito sa kayong research questions natin with implications na Sinulat mo in your move number four. The current study was designed to address this particular question. The research project reported this paper would like to focus on the three main goals. Ito yung mga kanyang main goals. Okay? Ito yung kanyang mga objectives. And then basically, uh, most prob probably, this will provide what? Um, answers okay, or findings on how to remedy uh, problems in the writing process of the students, okay? So, yan. Kompleto na yung ating four rhetorical moves based on Swales, John Swales Carr's models, no? Apat na moves in writing. So, when you're when you have completed all the, all the four moves, you're done already with your research introduction. As a summary, eto po, move number one. Ano nga uli? When you write your move number one, Maybe in one paragraph, kasya na siya. 
Okay, introduce the topic, define conceptually what the what the experts how the experts define your topic. You can Google that or you can get that from the books. Then explain why the topic is relevant and interesting. And the lang or wag na or end. Okay? One paragraph okay na yan. Okay? Next is move number 2. Okay? So what is move number 2? You are going to mention previous researches, previous literature about your topic. Okay? So eto nga sabi ko, ito yung pinakamahaba, mga 5 to 10 paragraphs. Siya yung nagpapahaba sa yung review or sa inyong research introduction. Okay? Next, we have move number three. So, what's move number three? You are going to either make a counterclaim. Pwede mong kontrahin yung mga move number two mo dito. Mga sinulat mo sa previous research or previous literature. Or, you can identify the research gap, yung mga kakulangan. Or, you can just continue that particular topic, yung, top, yung mga ginawang mga researches dito, yung mga instruments na ginamit nila using your own line of inquiry, using your own local, using your own, uh, the, the respondents of your own place. Okay? And then finally, you finish your research introduction by explaining the objectives of your study. One paragraph lang. So, in other words, in your research introduction, most likely you will have at least one, okay, 11, mga 5 to 10, 11, okay, 13, mga 14 paragraphs lang. Okay na, as long as you complete all the moves, okay? Pag nagawa mo lahat ng moves na to, you are done with your research introduction using the format of John Swales. Oh, ito, let's try to have an example. I uh, was able to take this uh, example from the internet, okay? So, cyberbullying, an exploratory study of adolescent girls' perspectives on technology's impact on relationships, okay? So, this is an example of a research introduction taken from the internet. Uh, this is an introduction na gumamit siya ng John Swales creating a research space model, okay? Cars model, the four rhetorical moves. Sinunod niya yung apat na rhetorical moves or yung apat na steps ni Swales. Okay? So, himay-himayin natin. Tingnan natin. Saan dyan yung move number one? Saan dyan yung move number two? Saan yung move number three? Saan yung move number four? O, ito yung kanyang move number one. Okay? So, makikita nyo. Establishing the research territory, explaining why the topic is relevant and interesting. The concept of cyberbullying is becoming a hot topic in psychology. Yan. Define niya what is cyberbullying. Define niya what, sinabi niya, bakit relevant, makabuluhan, bakit interesanting pag-aralan ang cyberbullying. Okay? Let's proceed now. Saan yung parts na indicating yung move number two? Okay. So this is move number two. Kung makikita nyo, this is the entire, the entire introduction already. Yung review of previous research niya, move number two niya, ilan ang kanyang paragraphs? One, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs. Okay? Binanggit niya, what are the previous uh, literatures? What are the previous researches conducted with regard to cyberbullying? Nandiyan yung mga contributions ni ni Kowalski and Limber, okay, nandiyan yung contribution ni Balkenberg and Peter, at kung sino-sino pang gumawa ng researches uh, on cyberbullying, nandiyan yung contribution ng Pew International, and so on. So basically, this six paragraph is actually um, complying with Swale's move number two, which is reviewing previous literature and studies, okay? Move number two. Okay. Move number three. Makikita natin. Move number three. Ang napili natin dito is creating a research space by indicating the gap. May kakulangan. Let us read this one. Okay? So, ang kanyang move number three, may kulang daw. Sabi niya, as recently as 2007, psychological research had failed to examine this phenomenon in great detail according to Valkenberg and Peter. O, itong si Balkenberg and Peter galing din ito sa kanyang move number 2 kanina na sinabing may kakulangan 
nagkulang pa yung pag-aaral ng mga studies earlier mentioned in move number 2, yung kay Balkenberg and Peter. That's why he is claiming na may kakulangan. Okay? And another one, in the next paragraph, research has also failed to include adolescents in the discussion. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga earlier researches in move number 2 niya kanina, possible na hindi adolescents ang ginamit nila, hindi pa nila naaral yung adolescents, possible mga adults siguro yung ginamit nila, with regard to what? The study of cyber bullying. Okay? At possible, baka lalaki. No? Kasi, ang study is about babae. Yung etong study na to. Okay? So, final. Finally, introduce the present research. Okay? So, tatapusin mo na yung ating tinapos niya yung kanyang research introduction by stating what is the study all about? At ano ba yung study niya? This study documents the voices of a small group of adolescent girls in an effort to gain more in-depth understanding not only of their definition and understanding of technology use and cyberbullying but also its scope and function in their lives. So once again, inuulit ko, eto po ay ilalagay nyo lang dito yung inyong SOP sa mga research questions lang in, in sentence form. And ano yung possible na maging contribution nito, possible recommendations, possible na mga implications um, as part of the contribution uh, sa ating uh, sa ating field no sa contribution sa knowledge in the field no ano yung magiging ambag nyo based on the findings so one paragraph lang po siya okay so with that this particular research introduction taken from the internet has complied with all the four rhetorical moves by swales okay and with that uh, we're done already on the lecture on writing your research introduction. So, uh, hopefully, uh, this particular modality, uh, medyo mas, ma, mas malinaw-linaw po siya. Uh, we try to adjust from time to time. We still have some limitations. Uh, iba pa rin sana ho. Very interactive pag nasa classroom tayo. But I hope that uh, you will be uh, diligently listening um, and then uh, uh, applying very well uh, the four steps in writing your research introduction based on the model of John Swales, uh, creating a research space, CARS model. So, thank you very much and uh, have a good day at ingat-ingat po tayo lahat.